Hi, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And this is the third in our series of deluxification videos, uh, making your games more expensive and nicer along the way. And expensive is a big part of that, something I, I didn't necessarily go into it in the prior videos, but basically this entire video series is about deluxifying your board games, which means some things here are going to cost money. This is not about, hey, look guys, I found these amazing dice trays for only $1.99 each. That's, that's not the point of this video. If I, if I do find amazing dice trays for $1.99 each, I will certainly let you know. But rather, it's about it's about the aspect of deluxifying our board games, taking pieces of cardboard, pieces of fun cardboard with strategy, party, whatever it is you like in your genre, minis, who cares, and taking it and making it from this expensive to that expensive, but also hopefully nicer along the way. These are going to be the things that I enjoy in a monthly-ish monthly -ish series of videos, although it depends if I actually have something to cover. So, with that said, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into it. And to start off with, speaking of dice trays, we're going to start with the dice trays. That these these are actually I covered in my last video on the series. I covered the I had a, a prototype copy of Chai T for two. And in addition to the game, which is a solid game, I also raved about how good these were. I said that these were excellent, and I was going on not about how much they were to the point that I included them unplanned in my deluxification video. And apparently I was not the only person who raved about these because they got a lot of feedback about how good they were. And so they sat there and said, why don't we take a bunch of designs and make a whole bunch more if people want, you know, different colors and different patterns of all these. And so I'll go through what they have over here because, and I'll build one for you too, but basically they have more dice tray options. There's, these are all going to be on the Kickstarter. I'll throw a link to that down below. And the price point, well, let's go ahead and show you some of these and we'll talk about the price point as we go. So it's going to be, you know, we have the colors orange. The inside looks like that. I'm just going to go through each one of these like so. And yeah, we got a purple and brown one. And the price point for these is going to be $12 each, two for $20. Any two you want for $20. Or alternatively, the last one was, I think it was all 12 for $99. So basically it becomes a little cheaper, but you're still paying close to $10. Even at 12 for 99, what's the math in that work out to? Well, 12 times eight is... Uh, 96. So it's basically eight bucks a pop, roughly eight bucks a pop if you get all 12, which is not bad actually. These are very, very solid dice trays. And again, I don't know how much this is conveyed through the screen. Just seeing somebody just rotate and flip dice trays only takes you so far. Now, for those of you counting, you may have noticed that I only counted to 10 there because the original two, the original two I talked about last video, they're not in this package. Uh, hopefully I'll get those along with the Kickstarter when I get them. And when I say hopefully, just to give you context, I now have 10 dice trays, and yes, I do want the remaining two. Not necessarily a good thing, but I do want the remaining two. So, let's pick one of these to actually make. We're gonna go ahead, I like blue, it's the reason I made one of the blue ones first. Let's go ahead and actually, ooh, coffee. I'm gonna make that coffee one first. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and take that. We're gonna make these because while the quality of these dice trays is incredible, the or at least to my own opinion or whatever, uh, from these, let's go ahead and pin them. And by the way, usual usual disclaimer that nothing in this video is going to be paid for uh, unless you see a paid tag at the beginning of, you know, at the beginning of me doing a video, you should see a little tag saying, this is a sponsored video. That's not true here. It's likely not going to be true for any of these videos. I'm trying to avoid sponsored content to tell you how good a product is after I got paid for it. I don't mind people who do that. I'm currently choosing not to do that. But that said, I will often have gotten free things to show you. So keep that in mind. There's still a degree of, okay, that one's not clipping, which is annoying. So this is actually, this time I have to hold this one, we'll see. This is the first one that's not clipping. So I was gonna say for these, what I have found is that they tend to be a little stubborn at first. I've had to like push them in a bit and now it's actually holding. But once you get that first hold, it does seem to hold pretty well, except in the case of that, I might probably just need a little bit more bend. But then once you do that, you have this handy dandy dice tray over here, which the nice part with this dice tray is, you know my aversion to metal dice. If you've ever watched my videos talking about metal dice, then you know I'm averse to them because I feel like they're gonna like damage the table or whatnot. But if I go ahead, well, if I miss if I miss the dice tray, then it's not much better. But if I take my metal dice, I go like this, I go like that, and then I toss them in there, well, I don't have to worry about damaging the dice tray. And this is, again, this is solid size. It's not too large, it's not too small. It's basically, well, it's just right. And these, by the way, these are gonna be the, the Witcher dice that I talked about in that other video. By the way, speaking of which, unrelated, this is a Witcher short, a Witcher shirt from Tea Turtle, I believe. Not really falling under the deluxe fashion aspect of things, but nonetheless, I will talk about that. And let's put these dice trays off to the side. So, that's number one, dice trays. Number two, number two is going to be an insert. More specifically, an insert for Castles of Burgundy. So we have over here Castles of Burgundy, and I have the 20th edition. The box looks like garbage. I, I'm still bothered by this. I mean, Castles of Burgundy is a great game. 
and they have this new anniversary edition of the game, and it still manages to look like garbage. That said, garbage or not, I do have this with a nice solid wooden insert. Now, I actually don't know what insert there is this is, because if you look online on Etsy, Etsy has a nice one, uh, Meeple Realty has a nice one. I actually couldn't find this one in terms of, you, know, you can see over here, there's actually a, what's it called? There's a URL on the box that's useful. We have the adpgroup.hr or the inmybox.eu, so... You can probably find it there. The Coin Worker Box, that's just the name of that box. So it looks like the logo for that is down there. I'll throw a link down below to both Meeple Realty, the one I saw on Inst on Etsy, as well as this one. They're all going to do slightly different things for you in terms of your, your collection of stuff. So, you know, I'm just going to pull this out very quickly to show you what's going on. This is going to be an extra one over here. We still need to take that out, though, because we have this over here, the trade tiles. We have our box over here full of all the, well, the goodies for, if you take a look over here, this one, the way it works, is it clips in and out. So I do need to organize those. Those are still a bit of a mess, but at least they're a pretty mess stored in there. We're going to have our coins and worker box. Now for this one, I'm going to include additional links because I've deluxified this game even further with these tokens over here. So these are going to be some 3D printed worker tiles. I don't know how well you can see those. And then we're going to have some 3D printed, and I believe Board Game Geek just released some packs for this. I could be mistaken. Someone did. But if you look over here, whoops, that one, bye-bye. Okay, we're going to go ahead and try to find that. Hopefully it didn't go into my coffee. Nope, went over here. Okay, because I would totally still drink my coffee. So that's going to be our Deluxified Bits for that. So again, this is a Deluxified Inserts, but on top of that, Deluxified Bits as well. That's going to slide back there. We have our little package over here. This is all the idea. At some point, maybe in my next video, I'll show you my Caverna insert, because different games require inserts to different degrees. Requires is the wrong word, but will make your experience playing games that much easier. You have, instead of having to like open a whole bunch of bags or deal with whatever garbage insert they gave you, you instead have a much more accessible version of just being able to get the game to the table. And that's, that's the main point of inserts. If you're, I mean, so again, the way I put it last time is sometimes assembling an insert will take more time than playing the, than, than, than the setup it takes. You might spend an hour assembling an insert for a game that over the course of two years, you might get that hour back. The difference is when you spend that hour and when you get that hour back. I can assemble an insert while watching a movie with my wife and just having fun, and then I can go ahead and play a game when it's convenient. So you can double up on that time if you do it well. So that's going to be our insert for the day. Which brings us to three three specific things that are all from the same company. Now, this is a company that I reached out to them, okay? So they didn't come to me. They didn't say, hey, Alex, we'd love to show you our things. I saw these things. I thought they were so ridiculously cool that I was like, I want to show you these on my channel. And so we have a few of these, and I'll talk about price point as well. By the way, price points for inserts will vary, but you're looking at a general insert for a game like this is going to range in the $25 to $35 range. It can go up a lot more, like an insert for Gloomhaven costs like 80 bucks, but a wooden insert for a game like this will be $25 to $35 potentially plus shipping depending on what you're getting or whatnot. Now, I'm not here to show you the rest of this back box because I am working on my own insert for Lost Dreams of Arnak. We'll talk about that in another video, but I actually got a 3D printer, which we'll talk about at some point, but that 3D printer is something that I'm using to build a full insert for Lost Dreams of Arnak when that is finally done. And I say finally because I have to get a bunch of stuff for my 3D printer, lots of tweaking, things like that. I'll have a video about my 3D printer as well. But... Until I have that, what I do have is I have these tokens over here. So, these are going to be, Lost Dreams of Arnak, coins and compasses, okay? Coins and compasses, they are all, I'm 90% certain, just based on the way they look, I'm 90% certain that they are 3D printed themselves, okay? But they're 3D printed with two different colors, so you have the two different color aspect. We have our compass tokens, so if you look over here, we have our compasses. That's going to be that over here, let's see if we can get this to focus. It's a nice, solid little compass, better than the tiles you have in the game. And then we have the coins as well. Now, I'm a big fan of metal coins, but I do find that these coins match the compass look and they have a nice feel to them. Definitely, again, definitely nicer than the cardboard you get in the game. And so these are going to be the coins and compass. Now, if you're sitting there saying, Alex, I mean, they're nice, but they're not like that company. Like, I reached out to them because they were that good and nice. They're nice. They're nice. It's okay. It's okay. It's bit, no big deal. You're not wrong. These are merrily nice. That is true. But I didn't reach out to them for these. I reached out for them. The same company for all of these companies called, I believe it's BG Expansions, I believe. I have to double check that. It's something to do, might be BG Expansions. I'll have a link down below so you don't have to worry about me forgetting it on camera. But that goes there. Let's do Viticulture next and then Root. Root is the highlight. Now, for those of you who've seen the set I'm talking about, you're like, oh my gosh, that set is nice, okay? And price point, I didn't look at the prices for all of them. I'll talk about the price for the Root one. 
Obviously, this will be cheaper than Wild Root and cheaper than Viticulture, just given how much content these various games have. Now, Viticulture. Viticulture, well, I actually have a few deluxe vacations in Viticulture, so let's go through it. To begin with, I've completely gotten rid of any remnants of an insert. This is going to be all of Viticulture and Tuscany, all bagged together. Let's go ahead and grab two of these out. Do I want to bring anything else out? I won't bother. I'm just going to bring two of these out, okay? Maybe I'll grab this. Nope, nope, not that, not that. Let's have some more coins, okay? Just because because coins are pretty. So, Viticulture is a game that I will have a review on the channel at some point. And let's go through the coins first. These coins, I don't remember where these coins are from. If you Google Viticulture coins, you should be able to find these easily enough. These are some pretty solid metal coins. Metal coins come in all kinds of different degrees of, of heft, of niceness, of the design, of premium. I actually have, in the next video I have coming of this... I am still waiting for them to arrive, so they're not here yet. But I will have a bunch of metal coins from a company called Modeus. I believe that's the name and pronunciation. I'm going to have a few metal coins for different games, from my favorite games from them. So we'll cover some more of those. But that's going to be some of these guys over here. I mean, these, I love these metal coins. I am a viticulture, to begin with, by the way, to save you time on my review when it does show up. I will be covering the review of both Viticulture and the Tuscany expansion. Uh, they still have, they have another upcoming expansion for Viticulture, and they also have... I believe the Farmers of the Moor expansion. For those, I will not be covering those because I don't have either of those. But I'll be doing Viticulture plus Tuscany, covering them. I love the game. I love it a lot, which is why I have upgraded metal coins and other stuff for the game. These metal coins, let's go ahead and show you these. So look at these. These just have a nice degree of... I just, I like them. I like pouring these down. Let's do that again with some of these bad boys over here. Just more, more pretty coins for the game. Yep. I like these coins a lot. I don't remember where they're from. I will see if I can find a link to these coins to save you the trouble. I don't... Yeah, I'll see if I can find a link and I'll throw it down below. Or if there's no link for it, it means I either forgot or could not find it. Or maybe I'll put a link to something else and throw a Rickroll video behind it. If I can't find it. If I can't find the link for these coins, then I will Rickroll you. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. So if you see a little bit.ly link, that means it's because I'm hiding the link for what I'm doing. So, Rickroll. Be prepared. Now the real look roll is me not doing it. So what is the main attraction here? The main attraction is Root. This is the leading up to the main attraction. So we have this over here. Now this, to be clear, in both this case and in Root, you're going to have purists, okay? Because what we're dealing here is 3D tokens, like I said already, 3D printed tokens for these games that are replacing different aspects of the game. Now I probably should show you, if I'm going to show you what we have, I should show you what we're replacing at the same time. So let's go ahead and toss these down here. Because... To Viticulture's credit, Viticulture is the one of these two games that I am less certain about the replacement here, because Viticulture does have nice bits. I mean, these wood tokens you have in Viticulture are solid. They're, I mean, they're nice. I'm not complaining about them at all. I just happen to like the other bits more, but I do like the feel of the wood. So these are the wood tokens. This is standard Viticulture. What you're seeing right there, that's standard Viticulture. But what they've done is we've replaced this with this okay so we have little token sets i'll try to show you them here let's see if we can show them to you you know let's just go ahead and show it to you up top so we're going to show it to i'm trying to figure out the best way to show this so we have this building over here that's going to replace one of those wood buildings you have we have the vineyard that's going to be our little vineyard with the grapes and the trellis or whatnot we have the windmill again trying to figure out you see you can see it over there and again, these are all 3D printed. They're going to look smoother on camera and smoother in the links. We have the oxen. They'll look smoother than in real life. In real life, when you have them in your hand, they will have that drop of a ridge that you're used to seeing from 3D printed devices. But again, just look at these. Let me see if I can do the front camera. Okay, we got all these little buildings here. Little, little stuff here. And again, links down below as well. Just things we can show you. I'm trying to figure out the best way. I'm going to move this towards the front camera and it's just going to fall apart, isn't it? Okay, you get all these buildings. That should... Nope, you see, it fell. Let's go to the top cam. All these over here. These are all just nice 3D replacements to those wood bits. Now, again, I like these a lot. I have replaced all the wood. I keep the wood because that's crazy not to. But I've replaced all the wood in Viticulture with these 3D printed plastic bits that I prefer the visual look of them. Again, I like the wood in Viticulture, so in terms of component upgrades, as far as I'm concerned, if we're talking about component upgrades, we went from, let's say, if you consider standard cardboard or whatever to be a, I don't know, a 2 or a 3, 
And then the wood bits are a four to me, and these are a five. So they're still a step up. I like them a lot, but they certainly are not the same level of step up that we're going to be talking about with Root. And that even with Root, there's still going to be personal opinions. So let's give you a bit of a precursor to Root as we package these up. So Root, if you're not familiar with it, is going to be a game where you have lots and lots of tokens. You have the wooden meeples. We're not replacing any of those. You also have the the uh, the factions, the, the various faction tokens. So every faction, let's say the 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 um the Marquita Cat is going to have their sawmills and their recruiting stations and their craft shops and all those things. And everything in the game of Root is basically a, a circular or square token that is, goes in the board with some artwork on it. Nothing wrong with the artwork. There's no problems there. But also, it, the whole entire game is reduced to a lot of flat tokens. And so there are components that's out there. This is not the only one. This is the one I have. This is the one that I have. And I believe if you, if you 3D print things yourself, there's even more options on the table for you. So, we're going to take our copy of Root, we're going to move it over here, and we'll show you as much as possible. Now, link down below if you want to see more, because the, the company page, or the, I'll show you the, the options, there's going to be an Etsy page, there's going to be a, a website, the website's in the UK, which is why I'll show you the Etsy page as well, I'll link to that as well. But basically, what they've done in this game is they've replaced basically everything in the game with nicer, deluxified pieces. And I'll go through, well, all of them, that's what we're here for. So. I'll probably timestamp each faction because I like timestamping things. We'll throw that there, we'll throw that there. Oh, so those I actually kept the originals, but I'll take this out. And that ought to do it. So let's go ahead and see what we've got here. We've got a whole bunch of factions. And the sad part, well, I'll tell you the sad part after. Now, I do have a tendency to say I'll tell you the something after and then forget to do so. That is another problem for another day. Now, this over here to begin with are going to be the resin kit that comes with the expansion. So if you have the resin kit for... Uh, not expansion. On the Kickstarters, you have the option to get resin kits that give you these clearing markers for Root that are just nicer than the cardboard ones you have in the game. They're basically, they're, I mean, they're 3D. They're 3D. So you have this like heft to the the, fa the marker showing you the various faction area. So it's a nice way of improving your game already. But then, but then we have from there as well. This is where we start showing you the component bits from BG expansions. So the first component bit is going to be these over here. These over here are going to be 3D rune tiles. So if you look at them over here, I'm going to pick up two of them over here to the top camera. That's going to be a 3D runes for the board. So instead of that flat gray token you have that goes in the board, you can replace those with four of those tokens instead that will go onto your board and just give you a more 3D look. Now I'm going to try to put these all off the side, but we'll go through them one at a time. Let's start with the Marquita Cat, because the Marquita Cat actually is one of the cooler ones. So in case your attention span is anything like mine, at least we'll get that out of the way first. So, Marquita Cat. I'm trying to think the best way to do this, because repacking all this is going to take up too much of your time. So I'll repack this all at the end. But we have the Marquita Cat with a few different options over here. We have their sawmills there. And again, links down below if you want, like, pictures as well. This is just me showing you everything. So we have wood, we have sawmills, we have craft stations. I'm going to show you all of those over there. Okay, that's what we have here. Look at those tokens. I don't know how well you can see them, but let's just show you even just the sawmill. Look at a 3D printed sawmill to replace what is otherwise a flat token. Now you lose, I've played with these, you lose none of the functionality of the game. Because of how they have the bases, if you can see them over here, because I have the bases over here, still having circle and well squares, but very, very color matching everything, these are both elegant and yet also flashy enough to clearly distinguish themselves. Now, additionally to that, we have the fortress. The fortress over here to replace, again, your little tiny fortress token. Now, this looks like what a fortress should look like. That is much more intimidating in terms of the game. And so that's going to be the Marquis de Cat. Then we get to the lizard folk. The lizard folk, who I will be able to talk with no confidence about what they have added to the game, because the only expansion I have never played with in Root, never played against, never played with, is going to be, I think I've played, I I have not played, okay, so I'm missing one of the factions, not missing. I have played with most of the factions, I have played against the, we have the river folk, the river folk I have played against, but not us, the rest of the factions I have played us, and the lizard folk I have played neither against nor us. So we have Something to do with the lizard folk over here. It looks like we got these little dens, kind of, for different colors. We have the fox den, the, the bunny den, and the rabbit den. And I'll show you all those as well. Additionally, we have this in a different bag, so that got mixed up over there. So, we're going to have the den over here. That's going to be these tokens over here. Now, to give you context, by the way, this is what they replace. You know, we have these little, little wooden cardboard chits that they replace instead. So, you're seeing these replaced by those instead. 
Okay, so that's the context. That's going to be true for all of these things that you're seeing over here. Next up, let's grab the moles because I have the crown for the moles over there. I'm going to grab that out. Now, the moles is one of the few factions that I actually kept something from the original. So we have this nice little den. This is going to be their mole den replacing the giant tile that you would otherwise use. That's, again, a fun little place to put your moles as they slowly invade. You dump them into there. That's great over there. It's also going to have replacements for the marketplaces as well as the fortresses. That's going to be the marketplaces and the fortresses. Let's show you them one at a time. So we have the fortresses over here, like so. It's nice. Again, you've got three different colors going on in these things. You have the base, you have the dirt, and you have the fortress. And then we have the, the marketplaces, which are just going to be two colors. So it's going to be dual colored over there, like so. Ah, well... That's gone. Then we're going to go ahead and we have replacements for these crowns. So this is one that I did not replace. I decided I preferred the feel and look of the of the, the wooden crowns in this case. But basically, we have over here, let's show you up here, we have wooden crowns. Here we go. We have the wooden crowns that come with the base game, and then we have 3D printed crowns you can use instead. Both of them are functional. In my case, I decided I preferred the look of the wooden crowns, particularly in root, which is so heavily wooden across the board and everything else it's doing. So we got another faction over here, just slowly creating piles of factions, which I'll clean up later. That's gonna be that. Then we have, I'm gonna save the ivy for last, because I really like the ivy. Now, here we get to the, I should remember the name of them, the, what are they called? The Corvid. The Corvid over here are going to be an interesting one because the Corvid are the least functional of all the replacements that we're going to see today. Because the Corvid, if you don't know the Corvid faction, the Corvid walks around the board planting traps on the board. So they're planting these different traps and then they reveal the trap. Now, when you reveal the trap, you can then go ahead and take that token and move it and replace it with the associated token. But again, it's the least functional because in, in the case of everything else that I have, I have just taken the tokens and I put them into a different bag off to the side. With the Corvid, I have to keep the original tokens, just do the fact that you have to have those tokens face down, and I bet you can use your imagination about how secret this pile of money will look if it's face down on the board. It's not going to look that secret. That's that's what I'm saying. Then we have these other ones. We have a few other traps over here. We have these. These are, I mean, these are great. Look at these. Look at these beer traps over here. Look at these, like, trap people in place. Look at that. That's beautiful. And we have this one over here. And we have, should have one more somewhere. Let me find the other one more. Why do I feel like there's one more and there's not? Oh, that's right. The explosion trap. The explosion trap doesn't have an associated trap because it explodes as soon as you flip it over. It, doesn't, it never stays on the board. So that's why you don't need a trap for that one. And that's going to be the Corvid conspiracy, conspiracy over there. Then we have the Woodland Alliance. Now, the Woodland Alliance has my least favorite piece. So the Corvid has the least functional piece. And the Woodland Alliance has my least favorite piece. Although, arguably, you can say that the least favorite piece is the crown, because I, that's the one I'm keeping the original. But for this one, I am not keeping the original, but I do prefer, not prefer, I don't I don't love it. It doesn't feel as elegant. These are going to be the sympathy tokens for the, for the what's it called, the Woodland Alliance, okay? They, they don't feel as nicely in place as alternatively, like these fortresses that they build, these strongholds, when you actually like strengthen yourself as the Woodland Alliance. These look cool. The little uh, tokens with the hand out of the air just feels a little off. It doesn't feel like the rest of the tokens on the board. From here, we're going to have the, the River Folk. The River Folks are going to have, again, just more of the basic stuff, nothing particularly different or amazing. We're just going to have our little marketplace stalls showing our wares. So these are going to be just a chunk of marketplace stalls over there where you can show your wares. You can see the detail on these is excellent, by the way. So there we hear the detail. Like you can see that detail of just how much it's beautiful. Beautiful little tiles over there. And then lastly, my favorite, and I think this is my favorite. My favorite might arguably be the uh, the Cat's Fortress. I like the Cat's Fortress. I like the strongholds of the, I actually remember the name, the, the Mole Folk. Who are the Mole Folk called? They're called, I can't remember the name. I can't remember the names, but... I think my favorites are going to be these roosts. These are going to be the roosts of the Eyrie. The roosts giving you, like, basically a place to have your eggs. You're going to have your roosts on the board, in physical locations on the board, just slowly getting you tons and tons of victory points as you build up your engine, only to have it collapse in front of you. And that's going to be everything. So, price point. Let's talk about price point. So, if you want to get absolutely... And by the way, I shouldn't say everything, because I'm actually missing one thing. I didn't even realize this. I'm missing the... There's a replacement tokens for both the tower and the raft, which are something that came in the, the expansion for the game. So, if you want something to replace the wooden tower, the wooden raft, they have those. I'm probably going to get them. They're like an extra four bucks. They come as part of this whole set, but I didn't get them. I'm probably going to go ahead and buy them, because even though the tower and raft wooden pieces in the base game are nice... 
I do like these other ones better. They, they're, they're, they're larger. They have more presence on the board. So, price point. Let's start bagging this up. Price point on this is going to be roughly, and I think I have to double check it, if you're on Etsy in the US, it's going to be roughly $80. I believe it's roughly 70 pounds if you're going to the British website and buying it there. I don't know what shipping costs are in either place. I believe the Etsy place had a $100 free shipping, so if you buy another set, you can get that, which means you're paying a lot to deluxify your copy of Root. I mean, if you have Root plus the, let's say, plus both expansions, that's roughly, what, $100 worth of game, somewhere in that range. Uh, that's not counting the newest Kickstarter. If you're just talking about the two expansions we have so far, plus Root, you're talking about roughly $100 worth of game. And you'll be paying another $80 to deluxify that experience. So just like anything on this list, figure out how much that's worth to you. Now, I'm pretty sure the Viticulture set is less. I have to double check, um, but I'm fairly certain the Viticulture set is less. Oh, I forgot the, uh, I forgot these. These are the tunnel tokens for when you're, when they pop up out of the land over there. But yeah. So yeah, the, the Viticulture set will be less. I'll throw a link down below. The Arnak set is going to be even less than that. It's the fewest amount of tokens. Basically, you're paying for the amount of plastic, plus, of course, the time, energy, and, well, a business making money as well. So that's going to be all of that. Additionally, when you're on the site, if you head over to the site, make sure to check out, uh, make sure to check out their, their sidebar of the games they have. They had a lot of tokens that were gorgeous looking for games I don't own or got rid of or don't plan on owning. And I don't care for tokens for games that I don't own because, I mean, I want to prettify the games that I'm playing. I don't want to prettify the games I'm getting rid of. So yeah, check out those as well. If you're a fan of other games, they have a lot of other things. And again, do understand that when you get these in person, they will look like 3D printed objects. I don't know how well, I'm gonna show you on camera again. I don't know how well you can see the detail. It's beautiful, do not get me wrong, it is beautiful. But I can tell that it's 3D printed. It does not have, it's not so beautiful as to feel like a mass market printing. It definitely has that slight little lines that show it's a 3D print. Does not distract from my enjoyment of it. But in case you walked into it thinking you were going to get something, I don't know, less with lines on it, well, you're going to have lines on these. Tiny lines, tiny lines, but still lines. It's just they're, they're, the, the benefit of doing, to the, doing this there with them as opposed to yourself is, first of all, the double colors of 3D printing, because 3D printing things in multiple colors generally requires an extra level. Even if, you, even if you 3D print, printing in multiple layers and colors is more annoying. It's an extra level of frustration. And the amount of tokens you'd have to do on your own printer... Again, I have a 3D printer. I have no interest in trying to replicate this experience myself. And I left this out over there. See, this is how things get mixed up between bags. So, is your root experience worth paying an extra $80 to Deluxify? I can tell you that I feel that I have significant... Mm, significantly is the wrong word. I have definitely enjoyed my plays of root more with this than without. It's something, it's something nice. This is no different than the miniature versus stand D debate for any other conversation. Ultimately, the question is, as a gamer, you, m me, whoever, do we appreciate the experiences more when something looks pretty? Looks pretty could range from, from art to miniatures to component upgrades. Uh, inserts to me are less about looks and more about functionality, so an insert to me has nothing to do with how it looks. I don't care. That's a lie. That's a blatant lie because I'm spending time making sure my Lost Wings of Arnak insert looks amazing, so maybe it's sometimes about how it looks. Other times, this hobby is just about owning things that are nice. This is a hobby of, I mean, it's both a hobby of practical experiences. No different than a watch, no different than anything else in life. If you buy a watch, you can buy, it's not fitting down as perfectly as I'd like. That's better. Uh, if you buy a watch, you can have your $10 functional watch. You can have your $100 pretty watch. You can have your $30,000 pretty watch. There's all kinds of experiences on the table available to you when you decide you like something as a subject matter in general, as a hobby, as a whatever. In my case, that thing is board games. Now, I'm not yet at the point where I'm willing to drop $30,000 on a single board game. Not yet. I say not yet with that little tremor in my voice, uncertain what the future holds. But like, even when you have these $1,000 Kickstarters, I, 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 I have a hard time. To me, my number on Kickstarters is like 300, at, under 300 is like for an all in, for like something that justifies that price. And I'm fine with it. When you go over that, I start getting queasy. I mean, I just put out a video talking about why spending $800 on Marvel United was a mistake and why I still did it anyway. But I think it was a bad decision, but a decision I was willing to make. But when you add up all the various games you get, when you add up all the other deluxifications of the things in your collection, it also adds up to $800 quite quickly. But I, I like this hobby. And that's why this video series will continue to exist because along with liking the hobby means I want to show you, I want to share with you the things that I think are cool. 
And I think these dice trays are cool. I'm going to go ahead and make another one just because I want to right now. We're going to grab one more just because I, I honestly just because I want to because these are pretty. Um, I like the blues. I do like the blues. I'm very heavily biased. We have this. I like the yellow. The yellow is nice and shocking as well. Okay, cool. I'm trying to go against my own bias. My own bias is towards blue. So once more, I'm going to fold these in. I forgot to do that the first time. I was a little distracted by, well, doing a video. So fold those in back and forth a few times. That's going to release the creases a bit and make it easier for these to hold as you go around. So just a quick fold in once or twice, and then just do this like so, and boom, Bob's your uncle. You have a beautiful little dice tray, and this time I'm going to totally, totally make sure I get them all in the dice tray. And look at that. We got an 8, a 3, 1, 3, 10, and 2, and that means nothing to me because I'm not an RPG player. I do want metal dice for my Witcher board game, though, because... I want to play uh, dice poker with nice, nice, heavy D6s. Anyways, until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I hope you enjoyed part three of our Deluxe Edition series, and I will see you again next month with a bunch of metal coins from Modeus, as well as a few other uh, fun things that came along with that. Until next time, have a good one.